Hello Floss Tube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome everyone to my channel today. I'm very glad that you're here visiting with me. It has been a rainy, cloudy week and it's the weekend and the sun is shining and I am looking forward to spending my day today out shopping with my daughter Chelsea and grabbing some lunch and I hope to spend a little bit of time this afternoon cross stitching. So I have several things to share with you and some plans, uh, upcoming plans. Um, I finished my current piece and I'll share that with you shortly, but I'm already busy planning my next few stitches. So the piece that I finished is a larger piece, which leads me into a smaller piece. So the next piece that I'm going to pick up is going to be um, a little ornament, ornament, it's a freebie ornament from Blue Ribbon Design, and this is Bundled Up Birdie. And I just kitted it up with a remnant piece of um, fabric that I had, and it looks to be Vintage Country Mocha. It's probably 32 count. And I pulled the threads just from what I had in stash today, so that can, that can kind of tell you how it's going to look. So I'm looking forward to getting started on that one and that'll be later tonight. It should be a pretty quick finish, just two or three days to stitch up. And then I, instead of doing just one in between my larger projects, I chose another one to stitch as well. So this is Grand Old Flag by Heart and Hand Needle Arts. I ordered this um, this past month and for one, two, three, and it came in and it just has three colors. It's a DMC. 3047, 3777, and 823. Beautiful patriotic colors, and I'm gonna stitch it on this dirty linen. And the piece of fabric that I got, I didn't realize that I had ordered a large piece when I just needed a smaller one, but I've got enough um, that I can stitch a small in each of the four corners. So this year, um, I have been working steadily on working, Finishing what I start, um, and after that finish, that burst of adrenaline from having a large finish, I use that to push through a small. And I've been doing really good. I've got a good many finishes. I sat down today with my book of days, my journaling, and um, on a separate part, I keep everything in a notebook. I punch holes into my book of days and for a three-ring binder. And I keep it in a three-ring binder because I have other lists and things that I keep with my stitching, things I want to purchase, things I have purchased, lists that I can pull out and take along with me if I'm going on um, a trip and I'm going to be visiting a shop. But this morning what I was working on is my list of finished pieces. Now I do journal inside my book of days what I'm working on when I start it, when I finish it. And, but on another list, I keep track of everything I've finished in a year. It's just my finishes for the year. So, so far this year, and like I said, I'm working larges, large pieces, medium to large pieces, and then doing a small in between. And so far I have finished seven new starts. Oops, is that right? I'm doing this, is, this wrong. I have 11 new starts that I've started and finished and I have four old whips. I think I'm doing pretty good. I do not have any pieces that are outstanding for this year, and there's one other whip that I will probably pull out soon that I started last year. It was a stitch along with a friend, and if I finish that one up, I will have carried no whips from last year. So that's a really good feeling for me. So my mind starts running towards what I wanna do next. And so what I pulled out today, and who knows, I changed my mind. I think it's Stitcher's prerogative for me to change my mind often. But I will be working on those two smalls I showed you next. And then on Sunday, um, I'm going to start this piece with my friend Kitty. And this is the American Sampler by Calico Confectionery. And I'm gonna stitch this one on a piece of remnant fabric that I have, it's a 40 count. It's very light. Let me hold this up. I did share this in my last video. And to be honest, when I held it up in the video and I could see the ink from that print behind me, 
was kind of concerned because I'm not one to travel. I will travel up to two to three threads, but other than that, I do not travel. When I mean travel, I mean carry my threads over in the back. And now I'm really concerned because I'm concerned I'm gonna see those threads behind, but we'll give it a go, we'll take a look, and if I need to switch fabrics, I will, but I will be starting this on Sunday. So I will be working on those two smalls and working on this one as well. But after I finish this one, it's another commitment that I made this year to start and finish this piece by November. I've got to get going on it, but I'm a little on the, on the fence about my colors. So this is my big toe and is the anniversary, and it says, above all things, love each other deeply. And my husband and I are celebrating a milestone anniversary this year. It will be our 30th year in November, and I'm very excited about it. And I pulled this, pulled, um, took a look at the different color conversions that they give at the bottom. And I really like this one at the top. Now, I thought it was black, uh, my husband seems to think it's blue. But when you pull the colors inside, the problem is they don't give the conversion for the ones at the bottom. So it's like they're giving you an idea of what it, how else it can look. But this shows that this is 503 Mountain Mist and the dark is 934, which we know is a dark green. And that is not at all what that picture looks like to me. So I dropped down and I thought, well, maybe this is the 934 and the 503 down here. So then I'm trying to choose colors to do this one. And I just don't, I have not been able to find a dark enough, like a black blue that I really like. And I'd like to stick with DMC. But today when I was pulling grand old flag colors, this is 823 and it's a dark, but it is a, like a dark, it's not gonna focus, there you go. It's more like a royal blue. These are the colors I chose, I pulled. And again, I'm just gonna flip the, um, flip this around. This I had this in the bag with the pattern. This is 3768, and one of the newer colors, the 168, is the light blue, and this is 3768. But I really want to go darker. But I do like the way these two colors look together, but I think I want a, a, a more broad contrast to the two colors. And then this is one of the DMC Variegated. This is 53, and it gives me good ideas I wish I could get better color of what I'm wanting. See that blue in there? It's like a, see the difference? It's more dark, a blue black instead of, that's what I'm looking for, that right there in the center. You got any ideas? I'd love for you to comment with them. But this is gonna be my next start after the American Sampler and those two smalls. So within a couple of weeks, I'm gonna begin working on this one. I'm kind of excited. I've, I've done a couple of pieces for my husband and I, but I've never stitched a, a true anniversary piece. So that's kind of exciting to me. So then I was upstairs pulling threads, putting things away as you do when you finish up a piece. And I started thinking about another sampler that I started several years ago because I do, I have been doing a new start on a large and then when it comes time to do a large again, I'm working on a whip. And so I decided to pull out this one. And I keep wavering back and forth because there's a Christmas, a Paulette Stewart Christmas piece that I showed a couple videos back. I wanna work on that. So basically I'm a magpie. I'm, I'm the next shiny, bright, sparkly thing I see I'm gravitating towards it. This week, let me share with you what it was. So I started this around the time I started Floss 2, not long after Floss 2, maybe within that first year. And it was a stitch along with Emily of Collective Possessions and several others, and we had a Facebook page and I never finished it. I don't even remember why I put it to the side, but 
but I've been thinking about it. And this is Theron Traditions Needles and Pins. A lot of people didn't like the verse and they were trying to come up with things to, um, to put in its place within the pattern. And I think I'm gonna leave it just as is, even though I don't agree. Um, but there is the yard. And the reason I am pulling towards this is my current finish was all about the yard. It was a huge yard in front of a house full of sheep. And I love, I've really enjoyed the mind numbingness of stitching all the stitches in that yard. But here is needles and pins. So if you take a look at this real quick, and then let me show you the pattern. I'm done with this first, say third, and I'm down into the roof. So I'm, or actually into the house. So I'm at least a third, a little over a third into the piece. Now, mind you, that house is gonna, that is, it's a 36 count, I'm stitching it on, 36 count um, Luna. I don't even remember who the dyer is, it's not on the tag. But I do know, you know, that's a lot of full coverage stitching there. I'm gonna enjoy this part. Maybe not so much this one, but I'll finish this up first so I can treat myself with this yard. Um, but basically, I'm a little over a third. What did I put it down for? So again, here it is. So as you can see, the first third is done. There's a few stitches list, uh, left, and I've learned how to do a pin stitch to, stitching on this. So one of the things that's missing is, is, I think the gentleman or the lady's eye, maybe it's her, her eye. See her eye is missing. And it's time, to, it's time to finish this up. So I'll have plenty of left over at the bottom of this to stitch other, other smalls. Um, but this is gonna be one of the contenders um, for my next whip start. So again, I'm upstairs in my stitch room, thinking about that piece, putting threads away, and I find another freebie I had. I, I went up there to put some things away. So I put away some fabric remnants that I have from the pieces I've recently finished. And I, like I said, I, I, I've said before, I do try to um, put on the piece of fabric, what count it is, uh, who, who the fabric is dyed by or made by, etc. And I didn't on this piece, but I picked up this piece and I don't need all that. And anyway, I did found a big slub right there in this piece, you see that, it's huge. What I'm gonna stitch is this freebie piece that I got with an order, I wanna say from Jen's Stitching Niche maybe last year, and I'm gonna stitch this one. And I think this fabric will look really good with a winter because it looks like a sky, but it looks like more like a turbulent sky than a, that, than a, a blue clear spring sky. So I'm gonna stitch it on this. But then I need any, I do need to even up the fabric, look at that. So do you, do you guys do this? I know I do. When I get a piece like this, um, if I get it, usually one, two, three, which is where I order a lot because from, because I don't have local needle workshops and they usually have everything right there at your fingertips, your threads, your, your patterns, your fabric, and um, don't order often, but when I do, that's usually my go-to. They surge their fabric a lot. Some places don't, some places do. I really don't have a preference one way or the other, but when they come and they're not surged, this is where I cut it. This is where I bought it. And look, you can tell it's uneven. So a lot of times when I get fabric like this, I'll pull these loose threads, like now, and I pull them until I get one continuous thread that goes from the top to the bottom of that fabric. And that way I know I have the true edge. So see, I'm still pulling. And it gets a little choppy or a little difficult there close to the end because see, those are the end parts. But I do that on any piece that I get that's like this. So that's actually the true end. So this just needs these 
here that looks like a comb or sashing needs to be cut off. But I usually do that on my pieces so that I have that true end. And um, I need to do it on this one. But anyway, that was a side note to everything else. So again, since I got caught up with pulling those threads, I'm gonna use this to stitch this. And if I play my cards right, I bought one of those long skinny tomato pieces. I forget the designer. She's got like a spools and a tomatoes. It's a long skinny piece that you can make a roll out of or a small long pillow. And I might be able to use this for the, the other side of this for that because this isn't gonna take that much. So anyway, that's a future, that's a future small. But that's what I do with my remnants. I'll cut them off and then I'll find, and I've been doing that for a couple years because I wanted this year to be a Christmas year. And to be honest, I, I enjoy stitching the, the ornaments in between the large ones, but I don't think I could dedicate a whole year to just Christmas. I would get bored, not bored, but burn out on it. And then again, my magpie, tendencies of go find something else bright and sparkly to pull out and work on. So there's all of that. And I did share all with all of you my heart sewn piece again last week. And I'm going to share it again this week. And I'm doing that not only because I think it's beautiful and, and I love seeing it, but I was going to finish this up. So I will finish this up tonight. I will finish this up tonight. Here's my kit with my I'm calling it a paddle. Everything I need inside, I just need to finish it. So I need to do that tonight because this was supposed to be finished before this video. But this is Heart Song. Is that right? I think so. Heart Song by Heartstring Samplery. And another one, I just can't remember if I shared this in my last video. This was my last small finish. I know I shared it on Instagram, um, but lately my, my memory is, my short-term memory is just trash right now. <laughs> and I can't remember if I shared this with you. So anyway, this is Oh By Gosh by Heart and Hand. And I started this a couple weeks ago and I finished it, started it while I was on my Memorial Day weekend vacation with my family. And here it is, and I finished it right after I come back, a couple of days after I come back. Is that the front? Yeah. And I love the bright colors. It's different. I do, it, that's one of the things I do enjoy about the Christmas stitching is because I'm more of an earth tone type person. And I just, I love oranges and greens and browns, just, just fall colors. But this one, Christmas, it's all about the colors and the reds and the greens, just the bright, happy, but this one drew to me. So anyway, this one is finished. And then I have this finished. So you waited a little bit. I made you wait to the end, but this is In My Father's House by By The Bay Needle Arts. I started this piece. Hold on just a second. I thought I would remember, but I don't. I started it in May, uh, Mania of 2018 on May 11th and I have a finish so this past week when I last saw you I was starting in the yard I had I think joined the yard from end to end I had finished the trees but so I finished stitching all the sheep there's wee little legs uh, the flowers in the yard as well on, as on the side of the yard and the verse at the bottom so it says, there are many rooms in my father's house. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So it's portions of two verses. The other thing, um, when I gave the last video, uh, someone said, did you realize you didn't finish the roof? Yeah, the re there was a reason for that. When I said that I had finished the stitching of the roof, I meant the cross stitches. There are, it was checkerboarded when I last showed it to you, and there are road stitches in the opposite. So if it was a, a checkerboard of black and red, you had the black that I did last week, and then the checkerboard 
the other, the red would have been the road stitches. So they're all through the roof. It gives it a great texture. I, I like touching it, but the thing is you can't really see it. So if you, if I get this framed, I will need spacers between the glass and the piece, but unless you get right up on it or you're a stitcher, you're not going to notice that. I come close, I think, when I first started working on it, not to stitch those row stitches. I'm sitting here touching them now, but I come close to just stitching the, um, the brown. It was actually, I said black, but it's 3371, which is a deep, dark brown. And again, here it is. So thank you for traveling with me on this journey. I'm so happy. This is one of the four whips that I've finished this year. And I'm so happy to have this done. I bought this years ago at my local LNS that's now closed. It still had the um, tag in there for the fabric that they used to have. And I didn't throw it away. I want to keep it <laughs> because I'll never have, have them again. But I had kitted the, it, the whole thing up. So this was 36 count pearl barley linen. I stitched it one thread of DMC over two linen threads. I use the Cobb 4 DMC. This is my second by the Bay Needle Arts piece. And she's on Etsy. I'll list her below, but I love her pieces. Um, I had one of them framed. I put it into um, my local fair, my state fair, and took the, took the sweepstakes ribbon with that piece that year. And it was 13th Colony Bay, which I stitched on a white Lugana 25 count one over one and it's gorgeous and it was a lot of work but they at the judges at the fair really appreciate it and it, i was over the moon with that ribbon but this is it so again this week i'm going tonight i'm going to start on my bundled up birdie by blue ribbon design and i'm going to work on that and hopefully finish that in a couple of days sunday um, I'm still going to start American Sampler whether or not I'm done with the bundled up birdie and try to put a, a stitch or two in that or thread or two. Let's say a thread, thread or two every night until I get those smalls done. So hopefully next week when you see me again, I'll at least have two small finishes and a little bit of progress on American Sampler to share with you. Um, those are my plans for now. And I did pull some out today. You may be interested in seeing, you may not. I have always, um, up until floss tube, I've learned a lot of things. I've changed some of the ways I've stitched. I've improved on things. I've reverted back to things. And this is one of the things I think I'm gonna revert back to is um, this is just, this is just some threads I've used over the past couple of years. And this is classic color works. And I was just putting them on rings because I saw, I wanna say it was Tanya the Scarlet House had was showing glimpses of her stitch room and she had a um, like a pegboard type hanger on her wall in her room and she had the threads hanging from the pegs i thought it was so beautiful but before that and i went to that i've been doing that in a way but i never got the pegboard and then I thought, oh, they're gonna get dusty on there. I'm not gonna use them enough. And so before that, I would use these photo boxes. And then I would use the Loran, it used to be Loran. This is just Hobby Lobby's brand of the small bags. And I would put them in alphabetical order in here as I finished up a project so I could find things. I need to get more organized because since floss tube, I have just become a collector of patterns, fabrics, kits, threads, and I've got more than I need of, of, of threads and I need them organized better and I want them more cleanly organized. I don't want hanging on the wall or on the door, but I wanna be able to access them quickly and easily. Not that this is not a quick and easy way. I just, I'm going back to this. So I, I'm gonna start with the classic color works and I'm gonna be putting those in there this during this week here. Um, I've got a week style works and a sampler thread one as well that I've not pulled from in years because I keep buying. I 
gotta get back to this. I feel like I'm wasting, wasting, wasting my, let me take that back. I enjoy <laughs> buying the cross stitch. I just wanna be able to access my stuff better. So there's that. But anyway, I've got stuff laid everywhere. I think that's everything I wanna share with you today. I'm looking forward to my lunch and my time with my Chelsea and little Waylon today. And, um, and my garden, my flower garden down the side of the house, this rain, they are just thriving. And I have some of my lilies that I, I bought off of my friend Clarence, so I don't even know what variety they are, but they're blue and pink and the, the bloom, the flower itself on is that big around and they smell heavenly. Um, we went out there the, uh, yesterday morning on the way to work. My husband and I leave usually at the same time, and he said, come take a look. And I was just, they're beautiful. I'll have to post a picture on Instagram so you can see them. The white ones especially are just absolutely gorgeous, and they're as big around as my face. So I need to get over there and do a little bit of weeding just to maintain, because, you know, with all that rain, not only do the flowers appreciate it, but so does so does that centipede grass, and it wants to burrow up under under our, our eco border so it can get in there to that nice, good soil where the flowers are. But I did, we do still have some yard work. If we'd stay home on the weekends, we, we could finish it up. But I always plan, I'm looking out the window. That's why I keep glancing away. I'm looking out the window at what I need to do. We've got some bushes we need to trim. And um, I did want to cut down a couple of bushes and remove one, um, but... We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and um, take care. Hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.